So we're going to focus on reading research this semester. This will be this far. The more you practice, the easier it'll get. It was hard for me when I first started reading research, and I just had to keep keep working. Then, I mean, even now, there's some research that I look at, particularly in fields that I don't know well, that I struggle with. That's okay. Remember growth mindset. It's not, you know, you are right or wrong, but you have to work on learning anything that's valuable. So when we're thinking about research, we want to pay attention to the parts of the paper because those will tell us something important. The title, Dialectical Behavior Therapy for Binge Eating Disorder, tells us something about what this is going to be talking about. And the authors also gives us some credibility and some understanding of what's happening. Marsha Linehan, for example, is one of the big names in DBT. And so while we don't you know, remember what Merton said, we don't just immediately say that something that a famous person has published is excellent, but it does make us sort of orient there. We're also going to be paying attention to the, the journal. This is Journal of uh, Consulting in Clinical Psychology. I'm not sure if you can read that. And the year, this is 2001. You can see the, the citation, the reference at the bottom. And I'm going to be including those throughout the semester. Right there, we know something about this article. And what I would typically do, and what I typically do when I'm doing a search, is look at the abstract. And the abstract tells me, is this something that I'm interested in? Uh, is this relevant to what I'm, what I'm focusing on? Um, so title and abstract are both useful things. We then want to look at the introduction. The introduction sort of sets a stage and tells us where we're going. And particularly, the last paragraph or two will tell us something about the, you know, the hypotheses, you know, that are going to be the discussed and examined in that particular article. This paper, uh, Methods is at the bottom of the first page of the article. So let's go to the second page. Um, and this is not the entire page, but you see that the method section is divided into several sections, you know, including assessments and questionnaires, um, you know, describes what kinds of things are part of the data analysis. Those help uh, orient us, you know, describes the treatment. Those orient us, and when we have a question, we can go straight there. We know where it is that we need to look to figure out what is being used. So, for example, they're using the binge eating scale um, and the emotional eating scale. Um, you know, they're describing in particular what the uh, you know DBT program for is um, that they're using and how they're going to be be assessing it. Again, the results are at the bottom of this page, starting with the sample size or the sample characteristics. So the mean age here was 50 years old, 94% were Caucasian. Um, and so as you're reading that, that tells you something about the limitations for that particular sample. You know, is this useful or not? Um, is this something that we can generalize to other, other groups? Um, often what uh, res uh, the results section includes is 
figures and tables. I really like figures and tables and go straight to them. You know, this tells us, you know, what they were, what the two groups, the treatment and waitlist groups were like before treatment and after treatment on, you know, a particular uh, series of outcome measures. Um, and then we're going to move to the discussion, which sort of summarizes it and then also talks about some limitations for the, for the research. Every article includes references, and obviously I have not include, included all the references here. This is about 90% of the paper, or 80%. I'll include the rest, or the whole article, in the videos folder. Um, I don't necessarily read the article in linear order. I start with the abstract, look at the introduction, look at the discussions, look at the figures and tables, and then I sort of fill in the blanks. As we're reading, we want to know what, we want to be very purposeful. What is their argument? Um, remember, and I said, you often find that at the end of the introduction, where they say the hypotheses that are being tested in this particular study are. Okay. Um, and notice that this particular journal, which is a BMC uh, complementary and alternative medicine journal, um, includes or breaks down the abstract in a very usable way, um, which is very nice. And what you want to be thinking is, what is the argument? What, what are they testing? And what evidence do they, do they find supporting the, that argument? Um, now, as you're reading, one of the things that you're going to find is that you're going to read academic papers in order to learn more about the topic. And as a result of your intense reading, you're going to discover that you don't know anything about the topic. That's pretty normal. Um, it's a little frustrating sometimes, but it, it is normal. And, you know, just sort of be patient with yourself there. You know, the fact that you don't know means that you've generated a lot of questions about what we still need to know. Here's another way of thinking about the process of what you do in a, a paper. You know, first you start with the big picture. As I said, you know, read the title, abstract, introduction. When was this published? You know, generally we're going to um, value more recent articles more than more distant ones. What are their hypotheses? Then you're going to ask some big questions. How big was the sample? Was it representative? Can it be replicated? Are there limitations to the study? Is a journal, you know, is a journal peer reviewed? So catching some of the errors. What are, what's the evidence? Are the conclusions supported by the evidence? Are findings supported by other findings in the field? And finally, what is what are the results? You know, you're going to interpret those results carefully in the context of the discussion um, and examine graphs and tables carefully, and then think about what's next. Do you have questions for the authors? What should they should they be doing? Now, I've been talking about what psychologists write, but let's think about journalists and what happens in in the media. Um, one of the things that can happen is that we have them, that the media introduces some disinformation. So for example, um, this particular study by Sherrard and Sayers 
talked about um or you know, people were talking about head horns and how cell phone use or overuse might be changing our bodies. Um, and you can see this horn. Um, and you know, this is what the journalist described. You know that Sharar and Sayers used head X-rays of twelve hundred chiropractic patients to claim that young adults aged 18 to 30 are growing bone masses, not bone masses on the backs of their skulls. One of the problems here is that there's not a lot of skepticism, okay? And as we'll talk throughout the semester, because we'll come back to this article a couple of times, there are some real problems with with this research. It doesn't actually measure cell phone use. It doesn't say anything about the general population. The study isn't really even studying horns. We don't have, we have some examples, but where are the, you know, where are the x-rays? Um, it claims that there are more males with these problems. But there's no basis in the article for that. And it also fails to make a clear connection to millennials, who it claims are having more difficulty here. Um, so we're going to see a number of different kinds of problems between or differences between scholarly articles and popular articles. Um, you know, generally popular articles are easier to read. They're more fun to read um, sometimes. But for me, I want you to be looking at scholarly articles. And they're going to take more work, but they're worth it. Um, in general, what I want you to do, I don't want you to be gullible. It's very easy to be gullible as you're reading research. It's also equally easy to engage in denial. And instead, what I want you to do is be skeptical, to believe with that, you know, believe based on the evidence. And take care. Have, you know, the next video is on APA format, and we'll just get down and, and dirty with it. Um, but take care. Bye-bye.